Hey there guys, welcome back, hope you're all doing well, this is Shaitan here from Cube, and I'm back again with another tutorial and this tutorial is gonna be insane. I'm really gonna enjoy this tutorial. Uh, this is gonna include Photoshop and Illustrator put together, but if you don't have Illustrator, that is completely okay. You can ask somebody, you know, who uses Illustrator to help you out, you know, in uh, getting a little bit of information and elements that you're going to be using in Photoshop to do it. So mainly 90%, 90 to 95% is going to be in Photoshop. So um, we're going to be learning to create a logo presentation with lines and grids and dots and stuff like that. Uh, different. There are, there, there, there are various ways of presenting this, but I'm going to show you one way. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. Here I am in Photoshop and uh, this is the final product. Now this isn't my logo. This logo is by Five Design. So if I go to his uh, Behance profile, um, so he is a logo designer, does a lot of cool, amazing logos. Definitely check him out. Uh, you know, he does a s lot of logos. I mean, a lot. I mean, he has so many logo folios. So I spoke to him and I asked him if I could make a tutorial on one of the logos by using one of his logo. And he was like, sure. And um, if I open up his logo folio five, um, as you can see, this is the logo that I used. It's a very fairly simple logo. Now, the more complex the logo is, the more time it takes. It's not tough, it just takes more time. So however complex the logo is, it's gonna take longer time, but the concept is extremely simple. Right, so I just went ahead and recreated this in Illustrator. Now, the main inspiration for this is by this person called as Ivan um, Artinovara. Um, and he is an amazing logo designer. As you can see, he has 10,500 uh, followers and uh, he sometimes uploads these kind of logo presentations with grids and, you know, this noise and, you know, stuff like that. Um, so this one, so this is the one which I recreated. Uh, looks pretty cool. And uh, there are a couple of ones over here which has a grid and stuff. So if you guys understand how to do any, any one of this, then it's going to be very easy for, you know, to recreate this. Um, so I'm going to be recreating uh, this one right here, which is basically right over here. Uh, looks almost the same, but you know, I've, I've tried my best to make it look super cool. Anyways, uh, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to Illustrator. So here I am in Illustrator and this is what I have. We're going to build all this from scratch and then we can get started. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete all this. Now we can go. So this is a 1000 by 1000 wide document and I'm going to go and uh, get rid of the grid actually let's keep the grid on so if you come over here you can set this to add a grid now this is the logo that we have now we need to create those lines so what we're going to do is we're going to press p on our keyboard which is going to give us the pen tool and we're going to reverse this and we're going to just add in any color stroke so let's take a green blue color for example and let's zoom in a little bit closer and make sure you go to your you have snap to pixel and snap to snap to pixel is turned on. Uh, don't turn on snap to grid because it's gonna give you a lot of problems and I mean it. So let's start off. So we need one, two, three, four, five lines. So let's start. So I'm just gonna go and, uh, whoops, okay. Just click, hold down shift and click over here. Press escape to get rid of the end of the anchor point. Now, as you can see over here, uh, we can set the stroke of this to two, which is, which is fine or you can set it to one if that's what you want and make sure that this is in the center so we can just move it eyeball it and place it then i'm going to select this hold down alt and hold down shift and drag this down like so i think this is in the center and um if you want you can place the logo uh, on the grid and it would be very easy for you but i'm not going to do that i think this is more flexible for me and uh, right there we go that's great okay so we have three lines now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to select all these three and hold on alt and just expand them out of the artboard by the way this is a 1000 by 1000 uh wide artboard okay so the next one is uh, we're going to select this one again just make a copy by pressing ctrl c and ctrl v and that's going to cop uh, you know make a what do you say um copy and we're going to go and just rotate this like so 
and then use my arrow keys to move it over to the side and we are going to go play around a little make sure that it aligns all right that's looking pretty good and uh, the next one is going to copy this make a copy pressing ctrl c ctrl f right click transform reflect click on ok and uh, we can move this over to this side all right let's just place it fairly in the right position okay now that's looking pretty good now to be honest that's all we need to do in illustrator i told you it's just a five percent of the work um that's it now another way you can also go ahead and make the grids is by adding the grids uh which is basically the boundary of the logo itself so it runs from here and here and here and here and things like that i'm just using the middle just to you know just for showing you guys how to do it uh, all right so once we have this we are ready we can go into Photoshop and let's go create a new document um, so we need a 1000 by 1000 wide document click on create and we are here so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and just set this to some random color for now and we want to go select all this and all this hold down shift and press ctrl G to group them so the lines are one group and I'm gonna select the uh, logo and make sure that it is in the center vertically and horizontally now as you can see it wasn't vertically and horizontal so i had to move that now i'm going to select all this and move this okay now it's going to go crazy so it messes up the alignment so what i will have to do is manually move this into the right place okay and then we're going to cut off the extra bits so to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go grab my rectangle tool and make sure you have smart guides turned on which is basically this and i'm going to come here to this top this corner and then just go ahead and uh, make this big like so make sure it you know it is 1000 by 1000 and then we're going to reverse it Ooh, we're gonna select it and then we're going to reverse it okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm gonna press ctrl a which is going to select everything in the document come here to the shape builder tool press minus on your keyboard and you can see uh, you know things start getting highlighted and all i'm going to do is just go ahead and just draw lines around the parts which i don't need and uh all right that's pretty close okay and uh that kind of gets rid of that Yes, there we go. And yep, there we go. And we can go ahead and just delete this one. So now we have only this, we can select this. Oh, it's already it's already a group, fantastic. So make a copy. So by pressing Control C, come to Photoshop, press Control B to paste and paste it as a smart object only. You can uncheck this if you want, or that's up to you. Go ahead and click on OK. And boom, we have this. Let's do the same thing for this. Copy, paste boom there we go now we want this to be the logo and uh, this is going to be the lines lines okay and then we're going to move the logo down below and it looks perfect all right so we're going to start creating uh the dots now but let's just make sure that the color is perfect so i'm going to go and just copy this color data so this is that and my background is going to be this one okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on the logo and add in a color overlay which I'm going to go take from here so this is if you want the color data it is 6d 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 click on ok and the lines is gonna be a lighter version so double click on that go to color overlay and we're gonna choose this which is gonna be af 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 click on ok and uh, this is going to be a very dark color the background so let's see what the background color is it's it's a very dark blue all right so if i open this up we see we have 171815 which is a very dark olive green color so this is what we have so far so the next thing we want to do is um, go ahead and create a circle and then just make a tiny circle and make sure the color of this is same as um our lines over here okay perfect and we'll go ahead and just place this on top of everything actually okay now we don't want the circles to be too fat so we are going to go and shrink this down okay something like that okay that's looking pretty good now all you have to do is make copies and place them at each intersection point so control J to duplicate it oops 
okay and then just move this over and uh, position it properly okay make a copy pressing ctrl j again whoops ctrl j all right let's zoom in great so we can select all these circles and just press ctrl e to merge them and uh, we can call this circles now i'm not going to be making any more changes to this so which is why i merge them but if you are going to be making more changes so by changing the color or position of something then i suggest you group it instead okay so we have got this okay now next thing so we're gonna go ahead and create these blurry lines as you can see over here blurred lines okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go select the lines make a copy by pressing ctrl j and this is gonna be lines blurred okay we're gonna put this on the bottom and i'm gonna rasterize this so i'm gonna rasterize the layer style and you know we just have a copy of this with the color now i'm gonna go and double click on this come here to the stroke properties and uh, we want to set the position of this to outside make sure uh, the color is the same as our dots okay and then maybe probably set the size of this to five okay and then click on okay so basically we have this at the back so right click and choose rasterize layer style so this is what we have then we're going to go to filter blur and choose a gaussian blur and give it an amount of 20 uh, or maybe let's say 10 I don't know let's say like 7 or 10 is fine pretty okay and go ahead and just click on enter and that's going to apply this Gaussian blur for us now we are going to go and reduce the opacity of this to 50 or probably 40 maybe I think that's fine and you can see we have this nice uh, this faint glow effect looking really good the next part is to create this grid so in order to create a grid what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to file and click on new and i'm going to choose a new uh, clipboard by let's say a 30 by 30 pixels and click on okay and we as you can see we have a very small box over here i'm going to double click on this and make it editable and double click go to color overlay i'm sorry not color we want to go to stroke all right and in stroke we're going to set the uh, position to inside uh, not too much so probably say around two and uh, color is going to be pure white and go ahead and click on ok and we're going to reduce the fill of this to zero awesome and then we're going to press ctrl a to make a selection go to edit um, and then we are going to go and choose a uh, defined pattern just call this grid tutorial and click on ok and that's it you're gonna come back to we can close this up now we don't need this nope and we are going to go to our background double click on that all right and then we're gonna go and double click on that again we're gonna choose pattern overlay so now we are going to go choose this one which is basically our grid and we are going to go and reduce this and just just see wherever we think you know is a good fit i think around 75 percent let's set it to 100 let's see what we get okay but i think we're gonna set it to 75 for now and click on enter all right now we have this grid i'm gonna take the the grid and let's actually open this up in the pattern overlay i'm gonna set the opacity of this to one so okay it's a very faint grid as you can see in the background not sure if you can see it on the screen but it's a very faint background with an opacity set to one you can set it to two three four or five but i would suggest somewhere between one and two would work out the best Okay, so the next thing we have to do is, uh, it's gonna be pretty fun. So let's take the logo and everything else above it, press Ctrl G to group them, and this is gonna be our logo. Just, just let's just call it a logo for now. So basically this is all we have. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open this up and uh, I'm gonna just select the lines blur layer. Now, one thing you wanna note is as you can see over here, the lines are visible and uh, very less but the blurred lines are visible even more so what i'm going to do is oops we're going to come over here uh with the blurred line selected i'm going to go and just press e on my keyboard to get the eraser tool use my left and left and right square bracket crease to increase or decrease the size and then just start uh, you know rubbing it up make sure you are choosing a soft brush with a hardness set to zero and then just just go around and you know just uh, remove off the the ones that are closer to the edge right there you go you don't want to mess around too much and then for the lines itself we are going to go and rasterize this so i'm going to just click on 
right click and choose rasterize layer style as well and now we're going to go and reduce this up fairly a lot right just click and get rid of a little bit of these layer styles uh, i'm sorry these lines okay so our objective is to have the uh the shadow more so more shadow try to make it as symmetrical as possible uh maybe you can reduce this down to 30 that's completely up to you okay so now this is looking pretty good so now we can take the logo and what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a copy of pressing ctrl j so the down one is going to be logo backup in case we want to come back and make some changes and this one you're going to go right click and choose merge group and now we can press ctrl t to transform right click and choose perspective and then i'm just going to go select this bottom one move this okay we want to hide this let's hide the bottom one okay ctrl t right click perspective uh move this over to the side uh probably move this to the bottom move this to the up okay then we can press ctrl t maybe rotate it a little bit more and there we go that's looking pretty good now we can also come here to the pattern overlay uh what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to make a new layer and this is going to be the bg and this is going to be uh we're going to remove the fill for this all right let's remove the fill and right click and choose uh rasterize rare style so now we have only the pattern now we obviously can't see the pattern but i'm going to help you see the pattern so this is the bg with a dark color this is the pattern so the next thing we want to do is create a new layer and uh, put it on top and i'm going to copy this color data so i'm going to show you what it is so this is 737174 and all i have to do is press b on my keyboard okay that's a pretty big brush and we're gonna go and just click over here all right and uh that's pretty much it right pretty cool uh, I'm going to take this logo copy and then just scale this up a bit like so. There we go. That's looking good. And uh, we can merge these two layers. So this is going to be my new BG. And then I'm going to, with the background layer selected, I am going to go to filter, blur. I'm sorry, uh, not filter, blur. We're going to go to noise and choose add noise. We want to choose an amount of one and Gaussian and click on OK. That's it. Nothing else. Okay, now the I forgot to pr uh, transform the pattern as well, so I will have to manually do that. So we are going to go and rotate this. Okay, and then we're going to just scale this up. Right, that's pretty much that's pretty much it I can do. Now the effect of perspective is actually given by the logo grid, so that's very important to note. So I think that's pretty much it on creating this beautiful looking logo design presentation completely in Photoshop uh, and Illustrator a bit, of course. Uh, so I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to mention it in the comment sections down below. Don't forget to subscribe and like and also turn on notifications for my future videos. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye bye. <laughs>